Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Jim Kleiber Show. Today is Thursday, January 28th, 2021. And yeah, you know, I think a lot of times on the show, I can be at the beck and whim of what is happening in the world of news. And I wanted to pause today and just talk about that meta concept for a second. I think yesterday I was talking about GameStop and the the financial industry and transparency and this asymmetry of transparency. And I think I try to take current events and dive deeper into them. And yet, one, I think sometimes it's hard. And two, it still relies on me being reactive to the thing that happened of the day. And maybe I do this a lot less than the other daily shows. You know, when I, I, I was watching, I think, uh, The Late Show with Steve, or A Late Show with Stephen Colbert because they changed the name when it's at home. Um, I was watching that last night. And perhaps that's a little different because he is almost, he's reporting the news for people kind of like the daily show um, when Jon Stewart started it, but even with Trevor Noah now, that the idea was to report the news of the day and then to put their own spin on it, at least uh, from the monologue perspective. And there's almost, there seems to be a certain level of, hmm, like reactivity in that, a certain level of being trapped into talking about what other people did. So in other words, the the Stephen Colbert's don't control the news cycle so much. They respond to it and reinterpret it. And I think I do that in some ways as well. And just thinking about how frustrating that can be sometimes (laughs) because then other people can control what uh, we're talking about. They have uh, the just by what they say or what they do, they can control the the media uh, story. And I don't know. I don't always like being told what to talk about, <laughs> whether uh, implicitly or explicitly. And so I wonder if that's how a lot of the um, conversation these days, a lot of the disinformation, a lot of the uh, media strategy goes is that the media reports what happens and the people who um, reports what happens and interprets what happens, but the people who make the things happen that become newsworthy are the ones who really, in some ways, control the the narrative because um, it's almost like the people have to report the news. And this is something I thought about a lot when Trump was in office. It's that Trump was the president of the United States, so whatever he said was news. Um, And the news, uh, many news stations had an almost obligation to report what he said because the president of the United States speaking is news, is a powerful statement and needs to be reported. And then they would often spend a lot of time analyzing and interpreting it. Um, It's like the tweets that he would send out. I can remember watching CNN or MSNBC or any of those channels, you know, even even Twitter itself. Trump would send out a tweet, and then people would spend hours interpreting. Oh, what did he mean by that tweet? Did he mean this? Did he mean that? Could he have possibly meant this? And it's just him sending out one tweet, basically uh, controlled the narrative for the day. <laughs> And so many other people uh, reported it and therefore tried to analyze it, interpret it. And it was the topic of discussion. And so maybe it's not the ability to control the the uh, conversation or the responses to it, but it's almost like the topic statement or like this is the theme. They controlled the theme for the day, put it that way. And sometimes I want to come up with the theme myself. <laughs> You know, sometimes I don't want to have to just respond to the theme of uh, someone else's desire. Maybe that means I do a show that's not daily. Maybe it's it's um, easier to do that when it's a weekly show and one can pull from whatever they want. Maybe it's much easier to do that when the show doesn't have a regular schedule 
and then um, we can talk about what we want. Or maybe sometimes we can just talk about what we want, right? So I'm fascinated about this idea of uh, responding to the new story or becoming the new story in ourself. What's stopping us, us from starting a new topic, starting a new theme? You know, I think about this when it comes to the app Clubhouse a lot. You know, there are people who start different rooms on there, and you can join a room and you can listen and you know, I can go in there and I can agree with the theme or I can disagree with the theme. And regardless, when they start the room, they control the theme of the conversation. But I could also start a room. Now, maybe it's a similar challenge. When I start a room, not necessarily, every, you know, people are going to show up. It's probably easier for me to get attention on things that already have attention. Right, So if there's something that's happening with GameStop and I talk about GameStop and the, the stock market, then people who are already curious about that theme, who are already interested in that theme for the day may flock to my podcast and go, yeah, 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 I want to hear how he interprets or how he analyzes this or what other things he brings to this. Um, but if I start the theme myself, that doesn't connect to kind of a I don't know if zeitgeist is the right word, but the, a theme that is already currently flowing through um, through media, then people may not be ready to jump on, or they may not already be primed to jump into it. But when they jump into it, what could happen is I could be the first domino, right? So then they could jump into that theme and be like, oh, this is a fascinating conversation. And then they may spread that like, oh, this guy was talking about this. And that theme could spread. Um, but that doesn't seem so much like a news show. That seems more like a news-making show. I don't know. I think there's maybe a difference between a news reporting or a news analyzing and a news-making show. Um, and I don't know how many shows are news-making. Maybe some are. I mean, I can think about there was a show with... Uh, What's it called? Is it called Red Table Talks or Red Table Diaries or something with um, Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith? Mostly Jada Pinkett Smith, I think. But um, I've seen that stir up a lot of conversation on the internet from the conversations they've had there. Um, and maybe podcasts, you know, certain podcasts uh, like Joe Rogan Experience and, and some others will uh, stir kind of a collective attention. Um, yeah, just curious about this idea of like news reporting and news analyzing uh, as opposed to news making and how when we don't, when we report or when we analyze, we don't choose the theme, we respond to the theme. We still play within the bounds that someone else has set up. We're still in their sandbox, if you will. Um, whereas um, when we set the theme ourselves, then other people play within that box that we've we've described. Huh. How often does this happen in our lives too? Here, here's me trying to take it deeper. <laughs> How often does this happen in our personal lives where we just constantly respond to the to the overall decisions that somebody else has made? Where we don't take the lead, we don't step up and, and talk about what we really want. You know, somebody gives us options. They say, oh, you could have this, this, or this. What do you want? You're like, well, I'll take uh, the second option. But we don't realize sometimes that they set up the boundaries of the three options and they set up the choices for us. What if we wanted something that wasn't within those three choices? So somebody being like, oh, do, would you want McDonald's, Burger King, or Wendy's? And me thinking, I want Subway. <laughs> Right? If they only give me those three options, I can't say that. Or if really what I want to do is uh, to cook at home, I say, I want to cook at home. Do you, then I can give them the options. Do you want this or that or this? <laughs> and so really, I think sometimes maybe it's depending on our personality and in our upbringing and all these different things, culture, et cetera, et cetera. So many reasons for why we behave in different ways. I think sometimes there are some of us who um, fall into the category of responding a lot to the things that other people start um, and play within those boxes, and that's okay. 
And I think there are some times when we are the ones who start a lot of things and we set the framework for a lot of other people and the other people play within those um, um, bounds. And I think that's okay as well. Um, but sometimes I think we do these without even realizing that we could do the other one. We could step back and um, try to see what it's like to be in the other experience. So not always having, so one on one hand, not always having to respond or stay within the framework that someone else set up for us. Um, and on the other hand, sometimes um, not always having to be the one that sets the, the guidelines and being able to just join in and respond to a theme that someone else has set up or to or a decision or again, guidelines or framework that someone else has set up. I think that app Clubhouse is actually uh, can be quite helpful in this. Just realizing that sometimes, okay, we're the people who join in on the conversations that others have started. And sometimes we want to start the conversation ourselves. What I've noticed is that it seems to be um, many of the same people starting conversations on the app and the majority of us just joining in and following. I think sometimes it can be really hard to start the conversation. I think it could be scary. Um, what if I start a conversation or what if I make a decision and nobody follows? <laughs> what if nobody comes? What if on my show I talk about something that has nothing to do with what's going on right now? Um, something that maybe is uh, feels a bit esoteric for some. Um, and what if I started talking about um, the origin of speech or I started talking about what, you know, um, an experience in Tanzania that has nothing to do or what if I started talking about, you know, uh, geopolitical water crisis? Or what if I started talking about um, so many other things that don't really connect with what's going on right now? Will people show up? And if they show up, will they try to change the conversation? Will they actually want to listen to a conversation for that long? So then there can be the fear. There can also just be the self-doubt. Like, do people even think that the ideas I come up with are that worthwhile to uh, pay attention to and to spark for their conversation? Like, okay, maybe people will come and listen, but will it inspire people to have conversation with others? And like, are, are the topics that controversial themselves? Do I want to be the, the person who starts like uh, the dominoes falling and have like lots of conversation? Uh, happening about this? Do I really want that much attention? So there's so much to kind of ask and play with. Um, I think I can tend to fall into the category of um, joining conversations that others have already started. Sometimes I fear that if I start one, no one will show up and then it's not a conversation. It's just a monologue. <laughs> um but I wonder how other people experience this. Maybe people hear that and they go, yeah, right. You, you've done a hundred and this is 109 podcast episodes and you don't always talk about the news. You talk about a lot of different topics. Um, so maybe, maybe it's just a self-perception thing, but um, how do you, how do you do it? Do you normally join a conversation or do you start a conversation? Um, do you, join a decision and make it within the, the framework that's already been decided? Or do you d set up the decision framework for people? Where do you normally fall? Again, one is not good or, or bad. Um, it, it's just curious. I think, you know, sometimes I'm really curious just to pause and reflect on these things and to see what our tendencies are. Sometimes it's fun to just try the other one or to try more of the other one or to, to be more confident and more um, aware of the ones that we do and we enjoy doing. So maybe we like to report on the news, again, kind of following up on the stories that other people have started, and we like to put our uh, input on that. It's like being in a conversation in Clubhouse or even at an event, you know, where there's a, there's a panelist on stage, uh, there's like two panelists and a moderator, and you go, oh, okay, they have a framework of the conversation. Maybe the topic is about uh, the economy and uh, the future of the economy. And so therefore your question has to relate to the future of the economy almost always. And so maybe you like being the person in the audience who raises the hand and asks the question. Maybe you like being the moderator. Maybe you like being one of the panelists. So as a panelist, you know, the question is still 
framed maybe by the moderator or the event uh, maker and you have you play within the bounds of that framing but maybe you like to be the one who creates the event or the moderator who says this is what the topic is going to be for the day and organizes people to show up and um, really starts the conversation maybe that's the issue you know there's the starting of the conversation there's the joining or and the continuing of the conversation and each role is different and each role is necessary right so if we just start a conversation but no, nobody joins <laughs> then it's not it's like i said just a monologue it's not really a conversation or if we join a conversation uh, that nobody has started, then we can't, <laughs> I mean, there's no conversation to join. Um, and if we aren't keeping the conversation alive and furthering it, then then it dies out very quickly and it doesn't spread very much. So maybe we all play different roles in this idea of conversation and this idea of collective decision-making or collective interaction. Um, and we have different roles and, again, Maybe sometimes we like playing ones, you know, certain ones more than others, and that's okay. And uh, maybe we can experiment with it a little bit. So when was the last time that you, uh, so maybe on Twitter or on Facebook or things like this, are you a person on Facebook who typically uh, replies to comments or replies to posts? You go in the comments all the time? Um, maybe not. Maybe you just watch. Maybe you're a person who likes all the time. So liking or uh, putting a heart or putting a uh, angry face or any of these kind of reactionary emotion uh, emojis are even more bounded because you you're not even using words you're just responding to the the statement with kind of I think it's only like five or six options <laughs> so that's even more bounded in response so just curious so yeah do you what tendency do you have? Do you find that you're a person who, um, this could be Twitter or Facebook or Snapchat or Instagram or any of these platforms, do you post a lot? Do you comment a lot? Or do you like uh, and kind of give uh, reactions a lot? Which one do you think you do the most? And why? Why do you think you do that one? Why don't you do the other ones? <laughs> you know? <laughs> what's holding you back from doing the other ones or why do you like doing that one um personally i find a lot on twitter i um i like a lot I, you know i'll click, go through i'll like things and maybe retweet but mostly just liking things um part of that's maybe out of fear of, of tweeting too much and exposing too much of myself um uh, maybe part of that is uh uh, liking the quick interaction of liking where I, you know, if I um, were to type something out, then I'm typing on my phone and it's not as quick. Um, and then if I like something, I don't get replies typically. But if I send something out, I may get a lot of replies and that may get out of hand very quickly. Um, again, I may start the conversation and it may, boom, it may blossom. Um, and then I may feel the need to continue to reply to the conversation and, and stay in that conversation. Or sometimes I may post and nobody responds at all and I feel frustrated that I'm just talking to myself. Um, I think on Facebook I have a tendency to comment a lot. Um, I'll like, but then I have, I'll comment more on Facebook and reply more on Facebook than I do on Twitter, but still don't post too much. On Instagram, I don't really do anything. I just look. <laughs> Like, I barely, I just kind of look. Uh, I don't even like anything on there. Um, what, uh, so just curious how you interact with social media and if that relates to how you interact with life. Um, are you the one that starts the conversation or responds to it or kind of watches and just, uh, they say lurker on the internet. I don't really like that term. It's a bit, uh, <laughs> it's a bit dark. Like the person's just lurking in the shadows kind of, you know, peeking around the corners. Um, maybe it has more relevancy than I thought or relevance, but um, yeah. So just curious to pause, reflect and think about how we engage in conversation, whether it's something coming through the news, uh, through the traditional news media channels or through social media. And are we starting the conversation? Are we, uh, responding to it or are we just kind of uh, watching it 
and all the the various ways in between it. Um, yeah, I don't know which one this would fall into. I think this is more uh, starting a conversation because I'm not really responding to a specific thing that happened in the news. Um, and it's, it seems like a different conversation in itself. But I one thing that frustrates me sometimes about the podcast is that I'll put something out and I don't hear anything back. But I also don't, um, I may start the conversation here, but I don't spread it by posting on Facebook or posting on Twitter and letting people know what the conversation was about and giving them more background and really kind of developing uh, what the conversation or what the podcast was about. Um, and so perhaps maybe a lot of this is starting a conversation, but to start a conversation is not to just start speaking, but to speak and tell people what you spoke about and really um, start it on the other platforms by uh, posting. And, um, <laughs> oh, that's a realization that I start it here, but my hesitancy to start it on Facebook or Twitter or, uh, Instagram or Snapchat or these other platforms may stop it from spreading or email. My hesitancy to send an email out to everyone, um, may stop this conversation before it even has a chance to spread, um, so how to keep starting conversations, how to reply to conversations, all this mix. I, I don't know. This was just a, a time to, to reflect and to start this conversation about starting conversations. <laughs> uh, well, I hope it was helpful for you. I found it quite useful. I think um, I've learned a lot about how I love to start conversations in some ways and in other platforms I don't um, out of fear of maybe how out of control the conversation could get. But again, we don't have much control in all of it. You know, if we're responding to it or reacting to it, we don't have the control of the theme. Um, if we're starting the theme, we don't have control of what happens afterwards. Uh, again, that's kind of life. <laughs> it reminds me of watching a commercial where I'll hear this, uh, an old song playing and I go, wow, I never imagined that this, you know, could you imagine being the artist coming up with a song in the 1960s and now it's playing for an insurance commercial in the, you know, 2021? <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, I don't know if that's uh, just like how out of control so much of our creations are. We make something and then if it gets adopted, if people take it up, then it really can take a life, take on a life of its own and has this element of... I mean, it is kind of like our baby. It is kind of like birthing something and then watching it grow up and then knowing that it's outside of our control. It's got a, a mind, a heart, a, a life of its own. And it doesn't belong. It may belong to us in some ways where we have like a belonging, but um, it doesn't, uh, we can't control it. Um, it has its own agency in, in some ways. So yeah. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I'm taking tomorrow off. I, yeah, I thought maybe Monday through Thursday or Tuesday through Thursday sounds like a good schedule. Um, and, uh, I will, Oh goodness. I will talk to y'all soon. Sorry for the, the Southern accent. It slips in sometimes. Take care. <laughs>